Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you a new macOS Monterey feature which is specifically for gaming and that is called Adaptive Sync. So in front of me here I've got my MacBook Air 2020 with the M1 Apple Silicon chip inside it and I've attached it to my ultra wide monitor. So this is the Acer XR341CK. Uh, I bought this particular monitor back in 2015 and it has a refresh rate of 75 hertz and it goes at 3440 by 1440. And I normally use this with my PC, I normally have my MacBook on the side, but today I've connected my MacBook to my ultra wide monitor. So the particular type of cable I'm using is a walkie cable and it is simply a USB-C to display port cable that supports the resolution that I need, which is 3440 by 1440 and it can display at the refresh rate that we need too. So this particular monitor supports 75 hertz, so this cable will support that. So if you do buy a cable for this particular purpose, then please make sure you buy one that's rated for your aspect ratio and the resolution and the refresh rate too. I'm going to leave a link for this in the description. So one initial thing to note is that when I first connected the monitor to the Mac, the actual refresh rate and monitor resolution weren't set correctly and couldn't be set in the settings menu. I had to use an application called Switch Res X, which I'll leave a link to in the description. It is only when this has been set correctly that you can actually see the adaptive sync menu item displayed properly. So once you have a compatible display connected, what you can do is go to the display settings and then you can go to this particular extra settings menu here and then we're going to click on our external monitor and now we have a new option here which is completely new and it is exclusive to the macOS Monterey and it is this refresh rate option here which is now has an option for a variable refresh rate. So we can set here 60 hertz or 30 hertz. So this basically means how much the screen refreshes. For example, if we have a game that runs at say 70 hertz or 50 hertz, then the actual refresh rate of the monitor will actually match the refresh rate of the actual game or whatever content we're playing on the screen at the time. And this is one of the big advantages. It means that we A, we eliminate screen tearing and then B, we also have a refresh rate that matches the monitor. So it means that if we have a game that runs at a slightly lower refresh rate, then the monitor will match that and it will appear smoother and it will not have the kind of input lag that you'll have with VSync. So once it's set to variable, I'm gonna turn on the actual frame rate counter of the monitor screen. So this is why I'm filming this rather than screen recording it. It's because this particular option is overlaid over the screen. So I've set the refresh rate to variable and I've got the monitor refresh rate up there. It's displaying at 30 frames per second. If I move the mouse cursor, it kind of jumps up to 75, which is the maximum refresh rate. This is really nice because it means that the screen is only refreshing when movement is happening on the screen. So now I'm going to test this adaptive sync out by actually running an actual game. So the actual game I'll be testing is Rise of the Tomb Raider. I'm going to be running at 2560 by 1080. So this is because I want the actual screen refresh rate to actually match my free sync range on the actual monitor. So the free sync range of this monitor is 30 to 75 hertz. So that means that the free sync or adaptive sync is only available when the frame rate is between 30 and 75 frames per second. So if the game is running at too high detail and it's going at say 20 frames per second, then we're not going to see any benefit from adaptive sync. So um, let's just try this out now. So these are the kind of options that I'm running. I'm running some basic graphics options at the moment. So I'm, I'm gonna run a benchmark now to see how this goes. So I've started running the benchmark now and you can kind of see that this is the in-game Steam counter, the green one, and this yellow one is the monitor refresh rate. So you can see that they're roughly matching at the moment. So because the free sync range is between 30 and 75 hertz, that means that this particular game's refresh rate and the monitor refresh rate are in sync. So that's adaptive sync working as intended. You just watch this number here and watch that number there and they are both matching up pretty much. I know that this particular monitor refresh rate is actually refreshing much faster than the Steam frame rate counter is, but they are basically matching the same amount of frames per second. So one of the main things that Adaptive Sync will solve is the ability to reduce screen tearing. So that's when the Mac or the computer is delivering too many frames for the screen refresh rate to, to actually match. And also when the game reduces in frame rate, so below 60 frames per second typically in the past, then um, the actual monitor refresh rate will match that and it will appear a lot smoother. And it means that it will feel more like a 60 frame type of experience, even though you're running at say 30 or 35 frames per second. So um, this, this particular monitor is a little bit old. This is a 2015 kind of ultra wide monitor. If you were using something like a FreeSync monitor with 144 Hertz, then you'd see a lot of benefit from it. If you have a really 
big free sync range, say 30 frames per second onwards, then you will see really nice um, fluid motion uh, kind of all the way through, even if you're running games that kind of are really high settings, it will feel a lot smoother, especially with adaptive sync turned on. I just wanted to also demonstrate to you that this also works in a windowed mode as well. So I've got Deus Ex Mankind divided. So this particular frame rate isn't quite matching. So I'm just gonna turn down the settings a little bit so that we actually get something in the free sync range about 30 frames per second upwards. I'm selling this to low graphics settings and then I'm gonna put this at 1280 by 800 and we're gonna just see how this adaptive sync holds up. Uh, if, we, if the game runs at 30 frames per second, then it'll be working. So we go to extras and then set the benchmark. So you can kind of see here that the frame rate and the refresh rate of the monitor are kind of close. I know that this number is going a bit crazy. I think it's just refreshing much faster than the in-game frame rate counter is. But you can see kind of 43, 45 here. It's flickering between 43 and 75, which is the maximum refresh rate of this screen. You can see here 43, 42. That's correct. That's the monitor adapting to the frame rate of the game. So this is kind of working in a windowed mode. It's going to set this to full screen and just try this again. I just want you to be able to see it. It's really stretched because it's a 16 by 9 game running in 21 by 9 screen in full screen mode. But I'm just going to run this. It's flickering a lot, but I can see the 35 and the 35 kind of matching up. But it's going between 35 and 75 really quickly for some reason. But I can tell that this adaptive sync is working just by how the game is performing on screen right now. So anyway, I hope you can see that the macOS Monterey has some exciting new features, especially this adaptive refresh rate. So this is something that's been a long time coming. It's something that PC gamers have experienced for a really long time with the FreeSync and G-Sync monitors, and it's finally come to the Mac, and it's gonna make a lot of games nicer, especially if you're using a variable display monitor. Now, the actual MacBooks themselves they don't actually have re variable refresh rate screens. They don't have free sync or G-Sync screens. So this is really only gonna apply to external monitors, but it remains a very, very nice feature. I wonder if Apple are ever going to actually introduce their own variable refresh rate screens, but they certainly got support for free sync at the moment. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any more suggestions for macOS Monterey gaming, please let me know. If you'd like to see anything else tested out, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video.